Can one family change a city for the better with art in their home? Obviously, we think so, but let's find out. In 1998, we moved from Montreal to Orlando with three toddlers so that this guy could take the conductor's position at the Cirque du Soleil show La Nuba. After a while, we started looking for live music, both to watch and to play, but we couldn't find anything on my nights off. You have to understand that in Montreal, there's chamber music and arts everywhere all the time. What we found here felt like a cultural desert. So the choice was ours, complain or do something about it. We chose the latter. So we decided to organize one little concert in our house. This picture was taken then, in the fall of 2000. We had gone around the neighborhood passing out flyers with the kids in tow in a wagon. We put up handmade posters at the gym and the pharmacy. We had about 20 people in attendance. Turns out, musicians were itching for a chance to play the music they love, for people who came to listen to them. It seems there was a need for a place where music came first, not to support the food and beverage industry or to sell tickets. And the audience also asked for more events. I would prepare cheese, fruit, bread, and punch. This kind of hospitality in a home truly made their experience unique. And to this day, they love the intimacy of the experience. They converse with each other, with the artist, with us, making lasting connections. And in doing so, they create this organic community that binds all of us together. Whether it be uh, classical, jazz, Latin, avant-garde music, or singer-songwriters, we try to create an intimate experience for the audience, but also to stimulate the creativity of the musicians who came to play. The concerts grew fast, but the house didn't, so I did what anyone would do. It took down every wall in the house. I tried some materials, I installed an audio snake up the chimney, I commandeered a bedroom to use as a control room, and put up show lights with lenses and shutters to really frame the artwork. Every week, we would uh, showcase a different visual artist. While he was destroying the house, I was busy practicing with the kids, who always opened every concert with something in the style of the event. Here we are, opening for a jazz concert, playing one of my jazz ballads. Our eight-year-old is on bass, our six-year-old is at the piano singing, our four-year-old is on drums, and I played trumpet. The house where we started this was in the Timucua neighborhood. So our concerts, which were getting more frequent and more popular, came to be known as the Timucua Concerts. That is why we called our nonprofit the Timucua Arts Foundation, and we used Hélène's stained glass panel as our logo. In 2004, for the first time, the house was overrun with guests. So we faced a new dilemma, pull back on the concerts, or sink our entire life savings, past and future, into a new home, which a much bigger and better sounding living room. So we designed and built it close to downtown, easily accessible with plentiful parking. We did all the woodwork, the paint, and the wiring ourselves. There are 11,000 nails in the living room alone, <laughs> and enough space for a proper stage and 100 guests. We went to great lengths to isolate the house so that our neighbors would not be disturbed by our events, and conversely, we can barely make out the marching band right across the street. <laughs> Locally milled cypress, the shape of the room, the brick, the quiet AC, everything was done with sound in mind. Musicians from across the globe keep complimenting us about the exceptional acoustics of the room. When we moved into the new house in 2007, I started filming everything, giving the videos to the performers for free, a powerful economic development tool for them. And we started showing the visual artist working live on stage. The house has a state-of-the-art recording studio, a four-camera broadcast system, and a full back line, including a great double bass, drums, percussion, amps, so that musicians don't have to carry or to bring these large items. We have always been pushing for living composers, so we quickly became the busiest new music venue in Florida, with more than 3,000 world premieres to date. Thank you. <laughs> we often collaborate with other arts entities. We have our own resident new music chamber orchestra, Alterity, 
And we're working on a resident Latin big band, which we can now fit on stage. We're booked as far as two years ahead, and we have four distinct series so that everyone can find something they like at least once a month. Our Sunday concerts are free. Parking is free. Our master series concerts are very affordable, and people usually bring food and a beverage to share. Everything we do is aimed at making high-quality chamber arts enjoyable and accessible to all. Thank you. <laughs> Programming has been improving continually, and our roster next year is the best ever, with 92 events. We attract musicians who would not normally come to our city, giving you a chance to witness something you won't find anywhere else. A truly unique experience that the New York Times says you must try when in Orlando. Here you have a famous tr trump a Swedish trumpeter playing with local musicians. We foster not only interdisciplinary projects, but also international cooperation. Every year, we're the first stop on the tour of One Beat, a State Department project that brings musicians from around the world working together to share love and understanding through the arts. Our Latin series has become very important, and we now have programming committees for Latin, world, folk, jazz, classical, visual, and alternative. Which includes poetry, theater, film, and spoken word. If it's chamber arts, we do it. We sometimes reach our 100-seat capacity, so people ask us all the time if we will expand. We don't want to make the room bigger and lose that magical intimacy that we have. But we have been expanding in that we've inspired other people to start their own events in their own home, their own way. We reach out. We have events in unusual places. We teach music composition for free at the library. We bring alterity concerts out to the community. But our living room still remains at the heart of what we do. We still aim to create a magical experience for our guests and our performers. We strive to get better. So expect continued improvement to our home thanks to our amazing board members and all those who believe and share our visions. We've been uh, blessed with hosting musicians from every continent except Antarctica. They all want to come back, making our home a prime performance destination for them. Many of our performers and guests have come to think of our space as a sacred one, where arts bring people of all backgrounds together. Can one family change the city for the better with art from their home? We certainly think so. And so can you. You don't have to go to the extreme that we have to make your community better. Just remember how we started simple concerts in our ordinary living room. Over the years, we have built a community, a wonderful community of art lovers. We've met musicians from everywhere, and we've presented more than 800 concerts, not to mention hundreds of meetings, rehearsals, and recitals. All because we could not find one live band in Orlando on a Tuesday night in 1999. <laughs> Try to change the world in our living room, one concert at a time, has been as important and meaningful for us as it has been for our city. We built this very special home, not to boast, but to share it with the community. To share it with you. Thanks.